Welcome and thank you for choosing Enhan Go's InVending Cloud. Today we're going to go through a brief overview of some of the functions and features of our InVending Cloud platform for vending operator management. So we're going to log into the cloud platform. And it's going to bring us to the first page, which is routes. On this page, it's going to display all your different routes on the left-hand side of the screen. All you have to do is simply click the checkbox and it'll pull up any machines in that route. Also, on this side, you are able to click on the plan of service and to schedule a restock for that route. If you want to get more information on your individual vending machines within the route, click on the location tab. From the location tab, it'll show all the machines at that geographical location. It'll outline the actual address, the dollar amount of money that's been processed through the machine, and then from the machine you can click on to bring up more details. So initially it'll bring up your planogram, and then within each square of the planogram, it'll show an image. It'll also show such as 9 out of 10. It'll show how much is in the machine in that bin. It'll show the current price, $1.75. And you have the ability to make some changes down here at the bottom, such as edit price, which will bring up our planogram. So I can go in and change individual prices. I can also change capacity. So if I wanted to, say, switch out, maybe a spring and a stack vending machine, one that can hold chips, maybe it doesn't hold as many, I could change it from 10 to, let's say, 7. Also, I can go and change the threshold, and this is the variable that determines when alarms will be sent. So currently, when A1 reaches three sprites, it'll kick out an alarm to the vending platform to let you know that this machine's low. So we're going to go back to routes. So if we go back to our location pen, we select our machine, you also have the ability to pull up some more technical information. If you need any support, this would be a very useful tool, such as your firmware. Um, also, you can see the pay style, the name, the machine ID, which will always be important, the location, and you can even put in that address and longitude and latitude. Also, you can click over on this tab and see the sales summary of the machine, see the dates and time groups of when products are sold. You can see the product name, the type of payment used, the actual price it was vended for, and then if this is dispense was successful or unsuccessful. And then last but not least, there's uh, alarms and errors. So currently no faults. Also, you have the merchandising tab. You pull up the merchandising tab, it's going to give you just a little look into your product, such as, you know, what the product consumption is for this machine, you know, what's selling by, the per by percentage. You're also going to see your sales volume, your sales amount, and then how it's ranked. So as you can see for this machine, our highest selling one is this Fanta. And it's from slots A3 and A4. And you can adjust the last number of days that you want it to search and you know, give your variables off of. So now that we've had a pretty good look at the routes and this kind of general overview, as you can see, we have a plan service route here. It'll also, once you create that plan, plan of service, it's going to show how many machines are being serviced how much money is supposed to be collected and brought back. And it's going to tell you whether it's started, initiated, or finished. The person that's assigned with completing that service and the time it takes. So next, let's move along to a little more on the sales summary side. So we'll go to analytics and analytical reports. We'll do sales summary. So this is going to bring up a report. As we can see, right now it's based on today. But I can change it to a monthly or a yearly report. So now I can kind of see a little look into my vending operations, how my sales are going, whether it's coming from cash 
or whether it's coming from card, credit card reader, cashless payment. I can also see my dollar amount versus the actual volume number of products I've sold. And I can scroll down and look at those individual reports, such as which bins are being sold from the most, you know, what is dispensed, what hasn't dispensed. I can also look on it based on time. So we'll go here and we'll change the day, say the 23rd. So I can actually look and see what times I'm selling products the most. And based off of that, you can do different promotions to help promote sales at that time. Or you could raise your prices for, say, the lunchtime, dinner time, you know, some of your high points. Different ways to increase your profitability. Next, we'll go to product. So if, you, if you'd like to see which products are selling the most, you know, based on your daily, monthly, or yearly report, it's going to bring up some bar charts. And then you can go down and look at the actual numbers. Next, we'll go to location. If you want to see, you know, what's your highest selling locations, you know, which vending machines are doing the best. Pull up a nice part, pie chart, another bar graphs. And then you can go down and look at the numbers also. So you can help determine, you know, what locations do the best and which ones aren't doing so well and maybe need some changes or possibly need, you know, removed and switched out. And then last but not least, you can look at it based on your routes. So if you want, if you decide that, you know, certain machines are selling out a lot more, you can readjust your routes to keep those filled and stocked more often. Next, we're going to go to the promotions, advertisement, and media library. So this is where you can store your advertisements, whether it be advertisements you want to use to help promote and sell more of your products within the vending machine, or whether you want to do third-party advertising. This is where you can upload and store your different advertisements, whether it be an image, a video, or a text. <clears throat> and you can, you know, add it remotely or locally. Now, I will know that the note that the file size limit is 100 megabytes. So next we'll go to publish and this is where you'll actually be able to create your different ads and manage those and your ad task lists. So that way you can determine, you know, what ads have played, which ones haven't, you know, the times, the schedules. So right here I have a list of my current ads. I can click on it and I can edit it. You know, currently we have this image with a 50% off. The play time is from 11 o'clock to 2000. Um, I can go ahead and add an additional schedule if I want. So I can set up multiple schedules, say maybe I want to do 11 to 2000, or maybe I want to do from, you know, a full day, or I want to modify that. Now, if you want to just create a basic ad, you go into your ad description, and let's say we want to do promo. And then what I do is I'd select, you know, if I select none, it'll be a loop play. If I want to select every day, I can define the time. And if I want to define a specific time, I can break it down by minutes and seconds. So we'll just stick with the loop for now. So I'm going to add my media content, so we'll say the 50% off because it's a promotion. I'm going to click OK. We'll click Next Step. And now I get to select the machines that I want to promo this on. So we'll do Fairfax P underscore 002. At this point, I can click Save. And if I click Save, it's not going to publish it just yet. So if you sign an agreement to do third-party advertising and it starts next month, you probably don't want to start giving free advertising. Or if you're planning on doing your promotion, say, next week, you probably don't want to start doing the promotion right now. So you can click Save, and it'll add it to the list under Ad Management. You can go and initiate it whenever you like. Or if you're ready to use it, you can go ahead and click the Publish. And this will send it out to the in-hand, in-pad, or in-box smart vending equipment. And it'll go ahead and start playing your ad. 
Then last, you have the history. So you can pull up and look at the history of your ads, what's been published and what hasn't based on different machines. So we'll go to Fairfax 002. We'll do a monthly report. And if I'd actually published this with the time set for right now or in the past, it would pull up and show different information as far as when the ad was published and, you know, how long it had been playing and if it was meeting its criteria. So we'll go back to the Publish tab. We can go to the Add Task List. Like I said, it's you can track it here also. So next we're going to move on to the Warehouse Dashboard. So you go to Warehouse tab and click on Dashboard. Now this is going to allow you to track, you know, how much how much money you've spent on product and then how much it's valued at. So let's say that I bought 100, 100 cases of Coke and it's worth, hmm, let's say, $1,000 or $2,000. That's how much you've spent. That's, that's your actual cost. And then if you plan to sell it at double, then you would say it would be two or $4,000 in value. And then you would track the number of units that you currently have. And transit are the ones that are actually being kicked out for route replenishment. So if it's on the move into your warehouse or it's on the move out to your vending machines, you know, you still want to track that. Also, the machines, it's good to know exactly, you know, how much value is in your machines currently in product. And then you can determine the totals. You can also go down and looking, look at your pickup tickets. And this will be the determination of, you know, what was planned to fill the machine and then what was actually filled in the machines. So if you plan to stock 24 and then you only deliver, say, 22, then that would be annotated here. Next, we're going to look at our inventory. So status, storage, product volume. We'll go in here, click edit. As we can see, the different products and the sum and the price and then the amount it's worth. And you can also do add product storage. So you can go in here and select additional products to add down. Give it a price. Now I have $200 worth of product. Click Submit. After that, we're going to take a look at the stock. Oh, and before I forget, you can also go over to delivery. And from here, you can check and see what exactly has been delivered. So product volume, 625, and then the product's amount as far as the dollar value. And all this factors into the dashboard. And then you can go down to your stock and see exactly what products and how much you have of it as far as in a total. Next, we're going to go to systems. We're going to go to role management. So within the system, you have the ability to create different roles, such as a warehouse keeper or a warehouse manager, a replenishment clerk, a stockman. You know, organizational manager, a region manager, a route manager. And once you create these roles, you can assign different privileges to each role, such as when they log into the platform, do you want them to have access to, say, the routes? Or perhaps you want to have, give them access to the warehouse. And then you can determine if you want them to just be able to read the changes made by the management, or whether you want to actually have give them the ability to write and do inputs. After that, you're going to create users. So this is where you'll take each of your employees that you want to have access to the platform. And then you'll give them a username. They'll be able to create a password. And then based on that user role that we just created, they'll determine exactly what privileges they have. You can also assign them to a region. So if you have multiple regions and within one region, they, 
you know, maybe you only have one management team for that region, like say Washington, and you would select that and they wouldn't be able to read or write within any of the other regions, no matter what privileges you gave them. And that concludes the short introduction of the InHand Go in Vending Cloud. Thank you for choosing InHand Go, and I look forward to our next video.